Hi. All right, so last time I talked to you, I uh, had been getting up at 4.30 a.m., and then I had to stop because I got super-duper sick. Well, guess what? I went back to... I didn't let you guess. I gave you no time. I went back to getting up at 4.30 every day for a while, and you know what? It was still awesome. I loved it. <clears throat> I got a lot of work done. I felt good. Um, the past Over the weekend, I went back to getting up at like 6, getting up when the baby gets up, which is like 6, 6.30-ish. Um, but I plan to go back to 4.30 uh, during the week, and then hopefully it'll just develop into a forever habit. Um, and the video all about it on the main channel, that should be up right now if you want to go see it. I'm going to link that probably in, one, in the little little clicky box in the corner somewhere. I don't remember which corner. Is it this corner? And probably down there I'll link it. Um, I think it's a really good one. China's in it. My baby's in it. And I talk a lot about sleep stuff, and there's a lot of jokey times. It's fun. Um, um, but waking up early, I mean, I talked about it in the previous video a bunch, but I, I like no distraction. I have me time. Like there's a, I'm often not as, not as productive as I could be, but I have the time when I get up to just to putts, you know, you always need some putts time. And if I wake up early, then I have that putts time. You know what I mean? And I truly, I saw a comment from the previous video about uh, I could never get the hang of waking up early. It's from Jen Rodriguez. I always hated it through my school college days. I felt more productive in the middle of the night. I was the same way. And I think probably it depends. It, it's, it's of course going to depend on the person. But um, I think it also depends on your stage in life. Like when I was younger, that was when the fun happened later at night. Um, so I wanted to stay up, but now I have really no problem just going to bed. I'm an old man. I have no problem going to bed at like nine, um, and shifting my, my pro, my, my hours where I have more energy to be early morning rather than later at night, because it, at my age and at my lifestyle, it really makes no sense for me to just like putz around in, at, in the evening time. Um, I, and so getting up early is really, really helping. And then, and I, I'm pretty sure I'm just going to continue to do this forever because, first of all, the productivity. But secondly, um, it, it cured my insomnia. Like, for a long time, I, um, um, I would always wake up middle of the night. I couldn't. Uh, and and just uh, and could not fall back asleep and it killed me like I'd, I'd go to bed it wouldn't matter what time I went to bed like I go to bed at like 11 12 sometimes one sometimes two if not not lately but not since the baby was born as much but um, and then wake up at like I don't know after three to five hours of sleeping wake up and then not be able no never five hours three like after about three hours of sleeping wake up not be able to fall asleep for like one, two, three hours, middle of the night, then fall asleep, then wake up when everyone else wakes up and just be low on sleep, especially after having the baby, still waking up three hours in the middle of the night and not being able to fall back asleep, no matter what time I went to bed. And I think that came down to um, uh, just an inconsistent sleep schedule. I think it's probably the main problem, not necessarily when I wake up, but just being inconsistent about it. But now that I am for, and maybe it has something to do with getting up early, I don't know. But now that I'm forcing myself to try to go to bed at like 9, because I know that I'm going to force myself to get up at 4.30, uh, it, it makes me have a regular sleep schedule. And uh, I'm not waking up in the middle of the night. I'm just staying asleep. And then when I switched back to waking up at like 6 over the weekend, this weekend, still didn't wake up in the middle of the night. I cured it. After at long last, I've cured it. Um, I think if so, if you suffer from like waking up and not being able to fall asleep at night, or some kind of some form of insomnia, maybe the answer. Not I'm not saying this is going to be the answer for everybody, but maybe the answer is f forcing yourself into a sleep schedule. Be consistent about it. Um, and my way of forcing myself into it was getting up really early. 
and I'm very happy about it. Very, very happy about it. So, I think I'm going to continue to do it for as long as I can. Um, and I'm probably going to do another video, I don't know, months from now if I continue to do it. But here's the thing. Now that I've finally cured my sleep, my insomnia, I'm throwing it all out the window because I'm going to Japan for a week. That's a 12-hour time zone change. So it's 3.40 right now p.m. I believe it's like 3.40 a.m. in Japan. Um, so I'm ruining it. So when I get back, I need to make sure to force myself back to that 4.30 a.m. Um, I think my sleep problems somewhat began or really, really got bad when I went to India many years ago. And it was a major time zone change. And then I got back and it was messed up for a long time. That may have just, that may have just been messed up since then. I don't know. I just never put any effort into fixing it or as much effort as I am now. Um, so that'll be fun to mess it up again. Anyway, the reason I'm going to Japan, if I didn't tell you, I think I did tell you, I'm making a documentary. I did tell you, I'm making a documentary, but did I tell you what the documentary is about? It's about, it's about the Green Bay Packers, a Japanese, um, I don't even know if I'm, I should tell you what it's about, but I'm going to a Japanese, a group of Japanese people who are super Green Bay Packer fans. I have a friend who goes to Japan for business all the time. He came across them and he wanted to make a documentary about it. So... I'm making it with them, and um, uh, and he's flying me there. I'm gonna get some interviews. I'm gonna edit the whole thing for in the next several months. We'll be working on that, and I don't. It's not gonna end up living um, on my Wheezy Waiter channel. Um, it might come out on YouTube at some point, but I'm not 100% sure on that. It may. We're gonna probably try to. It's going to be kind of up to, it's not up to just me, um, but we're probably going to try to shop it around, maybe f film festivals and like, I don't know, see if one of the one of the big dogs, the Amazons or the Netflixes or something would be interested in it. Um, but I don't know where it'll ultimately live. I will be showing it to my Patreon patrons. Um, and... Maybe it'll end up on YouTube at some point. I'm gonna, and if, I, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try to create this thing that if you're not interested in football or the Green Bay Packers or anything, I'm still gonna try to make it an interesting documentary for everybody. So, uh, we'll, see. we'll see. You never know. You know when you when you go into these things, you don't know what they're gonna turn out to be. You just gotta. It's a leap of faith, my friend. Have you seen the Spider Ver uh, Into the Spider Verse? It's a leap of faith. Um. Anyway, so I'm packing for that. This is a one-man documentary crew. I got, come on, auto exposure, come on, auto exposure. So we got, um, I got two hard drives right here uh, in two cases. There's a blue one and a red one. And the, the drives themselves are blue and red as well. One, they're two terabyte drives. One of them is going to be a backup that will stay at the hotel. The other one I take out with me and put the footage on it. And I've named them uh, uh, Blue Ruin, Blue Ruin, and Red Dawn. Because the footage here, you know, if it gets ruined, well, there's a backup. So it will rise again. Those are two movies. So I'm a dork. I named them that after movies. Uh, I got some sound equipment. I got some, got some things and stuff. I, uh, I bought, I bought this case right here to put my camera in and lenses. Um, normally, I, I never really cared that much about putting things in cases. It wasn't very good about it. But then my microphone, which I'm using right now, on, the, on this camera, on this camera right here, uh, I had to replace it because. I, it broke in transit. When I went to, uh, if you watched the uh, the vegan video, when I interviewed Aaron Carroll, his sound sounds worse than everyone else's. It sounds echoey. It sounds more like from the room. Because there were two cameras. There was a close-up camera, and the mic on top was going to be used for the sound, for the whole thing. And then there was a far-away camera. And the far-away camera is what the sound I ended up having to use was because the one up here broke. It was terrible. 
and I almost didn't even turn the sound on for the other one, and then I wouldn't have had any sound, and then it would have been a very sad Craig. So now I have a case for that microphone, and a case for my camera, and lent some lenses. Not a case for quite just everything I'm going to be taking, but come on. Sometimes you got to live on the edge a little bit. Anyway, that's a lesson for you. Protect your stuff. Um, so I got, yeah, some microphones, some camera action, and I'm going to make a documentary. And um, leaving tomorrow. Never been to Japan. I'm excited. I, I'm probably going to be spending most of the time you know, do shooting stuff and trying to fix my jet lag. Uh, but uh, if but I may try to go see some cool things if I have time. I'm sure some of you will try to recommend things in the comments. Please do. But I don't know if I'll have time to see them. Um, that's about it. I'm going to keep trying to wake up early when I'm at home. We're moving. We bought a house. We're moving soon. Next month, we're moving. That's also exciting. Um, the next video for Wheezy Waiter, when I get back from Japan, I'm going to make that video. That will be uh, about how to uh, reduce internet from your life. Because we did a video about quitting the internet for a month. We're going to be doing a video. Uh, it's going to be just straight, very straightforward, like tips and tricks about how to reduce internet. The things people, the apps people use, the the uh, techniques like leaving your phone in another room when you go to bed or something. Um, but it's gonna, I'm gonna try to make it uh, very straightforward because you know these days there's so many tutorials and how tos and which is a Another word for a tutorial, I guess. Uh, when, you, when you're looking up something, when you want to figure out something specific and you go, or like a recipe or whatever, and you go find a website or a video, and there is a ridiculous amount of preamble. Like, just talking about, well, on YouTube especially, a lot of people will be like, all right, we're going to get right into it, except first I'd like you to click that thumbs up button and subscribe. I do these kind of videos, blah, blah, blah. This is what I do. Talk about that forever. And now I'd like to thank my sponsor, Hoobity Boo, Hoobity Boo, Hoobity Boo, for a long time before they get to the actual specific how-to thing. I do sponsors, and they're sometimes early in, in my video because that's what the, the sponsor, it was required by the sponsor. But I don't, if, if it's... If it's a how-to, if it's like something very specific about the video, I try to get that in as early as possible, at least some of it before the sponsor. Um, and uh, I don't ever want to ask people to subscribe and whatever stuff at the beginning of a video. If someday I need to, like the channel's really dying and I'm doing, I need to try, I need to try things to save it, whatever, maybe. Maybe I'll try that, but I don't know. I don't, li I don't like it. I'd rather just make a video that's useful as quickly as, and make it useful as quickly as possible um, without all that silly preamble. Um, and, you know, you go to a website, uh, recipes, like they'll have a long, like, I made this for my family back on Thanksgiving when, when my grandma came over because cause she said she wanted a traditional... Uh, casserole and I'm like this is a new take on the traditional casserole because my I used mm, th these kind of super tomatoes I don't know what I'm talking about um, but th just a long thing when people are just there for a recipe they just want the recipe just tell them the recipe you know and so <laughs> that's just a long uh, tangent I just went on but point is it, it's taken me a while to get to point I guess I actually already get the point. So, did you hear that? There was a honk outside. There. Was that a train? But I don't know if there's a train track over there. The train got off the rails, and then there was a cop probably chasing the train. I want to see that. Let me wrap this up so I can go look at that. Um, that video, the internet 
Well, these videos, these Wheezy Waiter videos, these are rambly. Wheezy News videos, these are rambly and take a long time cause, and often don't even have a point. They have multiple points. But that's just the point of the, this channel. Um, my main channel, I try, I'm trying to avoid that. So, uh, <clears throat> I'm going to get right to it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to try to do no preamble. Just like, right to the first tip. Uh, wanna do you want to quit the internet? You want to quit the internet? Here's an app. Here's an app. Here's an app. Here's a thing. You do this. Do that. Bing a bong. Binky boo. Bip bop. Pow. Stuff like that. I'll probably add in jokes and a little personality. I'll drop. I'll drop in things. I'll interview my wife and stuff. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna get right to it. Right to it. You know what I mean? How are you? How's your Monday? Uh, yeah, that's about it. Check out the new video on the main channel, please. That's up on the screen. And Patreon, where I do vi a week daily, uh, I pointed, but I don't know where it's going to be. A week daily vlog every day for the patrons. And I hope to be able to do that while I'm going to Japan. Maybe my next Wheezy Monday will be in Japan. You're beautiful. Don't be a dingus.